in this video, the insert list method in Python. So let's start with a look at the docs. Insert takes two arguments. The first argument must be an integer, which is going to signify the index or the place in the list to which you are going to insert x. And x can be any object. It can be a string, a dictionary, etc. So for example, if you insert at index 0, you will be inserting at the front of the list. And interestingly, what I wanted to point out is that if you insert using uh, len, you'll be inserting at the end of the list. And that's the equivalent of the append list method as well, which I also have a video on. So now let's move over to the terminal and let's start working with the insert list method. So the first thing that we'll do is just create a little list here. So we have a equals one, two, three. So how would I then insert a value at the start of this list, uh, a value at position zero? Well, we kind of learned from the docs that what you would want to do is a dot insert passing zero as the first argument. And then we could pass hello as our second argument. And when we look at a, we now have hello at position zero. And you can even confirm that it's position zero using slice notation and see that a zero is hello. And then of course, a one is one, uh, a two is two, etc. The next thing that I wanted to show is what it mentions in the docs, uh, basically about how that if you pass len a uh, as your first argument, you'll be inserting at the end of the list. So let's remind ourselves what len a would be in this situation. So it would be the equivalent of four uh, because we have four values in our list. So if we did a dot insert len a, and then, I don't know, let's pass say Python. When we look at a, we now have Python at the end of our list. And we can check that a uh, four is in fact Python. So already in a short period of time, we looked at how to pass values to the end of the list using len or how to pass values to the beginning of the list by passing zero. And if I run this again, we're going to add a second Python this time at the start of the list. So now that we've looked at the basics of the insert list method, I wanted to get into some more use cases. So one question I had was what happens if I only pass one argument? So let's just say I only pass an integer. Well, it's going to say, it's going to have a type error, and it's going to say that insert takes exactly two arguments. And it's not just because it's zero. If I tried to pass any kind of string, uh, that is going to fail as well, saying that it needs to be two arguments. So you need to keep that in mind. The next thing I was thinking about was, what if we didn't pass an integer as the first argument? So let's just say uh, I passed hey, and then once again, I passed, hey, what do you think is going to happen? Well, again, we're going to get a type error and explains that a string cannot be interpreted as an integer. So really, that first argument always needs to be an integer. And if not, you're going to get these hard type errors, which is something that we definitely want to avoid. The next thing I wanted to show you guys was what happens when you pass large numbers. And what I mean by that is let's just say we had a simple list, one, two, three. And we know the length of that list is three. What if we did something like this? So a dot insert. And what if we passed a value that's just larger than the list itself, right? So let's say we pass 100 and then, you know, pass our object as well. What do you think is going to happen? Is this going to give us a type error, um, some sort of error, or is this going to work? Well, you might be surprised to find out that that did in fact work. We did not get an error and it appended it successfully. It inserted it at the end of the list. So the rule of thumb here that I like to use is that if you pass a value greater than or equal to length of list, it's just going to insert it at the end of the list. So again, we could pass pretty much any value here or any number rather. Um, we could pass a thousand and it's still going to work successfully and it's just going to append it at the end of the list. I think this is a great feature because it'll avoid errors and uh, in your programming, if you're just kind of off about the length of the list, uh, that's not the end of the world. So far in the video, we've only looked at inserting values at either position zero 
or at position you know 100 or at the end of the list so i wanted to just quickly go through what happens uh, when you add numbers that are in the middle of the list so let's remind ourselves that we have now a list with five values here and so far we've only looked at either throwing things at the start of the list or the very end of the list but what if you want to insert it somewhere in the middle so what you would want to do is just pass whatever index that you want to add it to so if i did index of two and then I did say Python. Well, when we look at this, we have now put Python in position two. And we can confirm that by again going to the slice notation and seeing that A2 is equal to Python. So, uh, of course, you can insert at any value that you want. We can make A4 equal to PPython. And we can look at that and see that position four is now PPython. So that kind of works as expected. I think that's pretty intuitive. Now you may be asking, what happens if we pass a negative number to this list? And what you're going to find out is that it actually works, or at least it doesn't fail. And so let's just say we pass negative one, and here uh, I'll pass test. So where do you think it's going to insert this in the list? Well, if you feel comfortable with slice notation, you might uh, recognize that test, the string that we've created, has been passed as the second last value. And if we ran this again at say negative two, and we'll just make a test. <laughs> uh, when we run this, we can see that it's been placed as the uh, second last value, I guess you could say. Um, and of course, we did negative three, just to, so you guys get the feel for it. Um, I'll just pass, I don't know, one, two, three here. Uh, that now that has been passed as the third last value. So. I just wanted to show you that you can, in fact, pass negative numbers. Uh, you know, just I just think you should play around with it a little bit and just feel comfortable about where it's going to insert that into the list. Now, you remember for our, from our discussion of large numbers that if you did something like A insert 100, that's going to insert that at the end, right? So if we do 100 uh, and then we pass, say, 100 as the value, uh, when we look at A, um, 100 has been added at the very end. So uh, again, you can pass values that are larger than the list itself, and it's just going to insert that at the very end of the list. So that begs the question, what if we pass a negative number that was larger than the list? So now we're going to pass negative, num negative 100 to a list that only has like 12 values. Well, what do you think is going to happen? So I'll change the value to negative 100 so you see where that's going to get inserted. What do you think is going to happen? Well, when we run this and we look at A, we can see that it has been inserted in the very first position. That has been uh, inserted basically at position zero. So uh, I guess what you would say is kind of a rule of thumb is that if you pass a negative number larger than the list itself, uh, that's going to be basically the same as if you did it at position zero. So negative 1,000, you know, negative 1,000 is the first value here. And if we just did say zero, uh, we would have got basically the same outcome. Let's make that 2,000. And so negative 2,000 is the first value. So that negative number and that zero uh, basically have the same behavior, have the same effect. I hope that makes sense to you. I think one of the last things I wanted to show you guys is the integer value that you pass at the beginning. You have a little bit of leeway with what you do here. So normally, let's just say uh, len a, and then uh, we're going to pass something like apple, okay? And so we know that that is going to append to the very end of the list. So our last value is apple. And I just want to show you guys that uh, you, can, you can do a couple things from a programming perspective here, right? So you could do len a plus 100, and that's going to have the same effect, of course. Um, that's going to insert that at the very end of the list. But basically just wanted to show you that with this first value, you can get a little bit creative. Uh, you can um, do a little bit of programming and a little bit of operations within that first argument. Cool, so I think that was the last thing I wanted to show you guys. And let's just uh, create a new list here, A. And in this video, we've looked at inserting to the beginning of lists, uh, inserting to the end of lists, and how that's similar to append. Uh, we've looked at passing large numbers larger than the list itself. We've looked at passing negative numbers and the behavior of negative numbers that are, say, 
uh, more negative than the list itself, different variations of negative, different variations of uh, that first integer argument. So I think we went pretty in depth on the insert list method. So I guess at this point in time, all I really wanted to say was thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.